I've got fantastic news about gene editing in people. Trials are moving forward that aren't just for the extremely rare conditions, and we'll talk about it. And for the second half of this video, I'll tell you guys about what's going on in science right now. In the past, we were only able to do gene editing on embryos, but recent advances have allowed us to do it in adult animals. They borrowed a defense mechanism from bacteria that slices up the DNA of foreign invaders. Turns out that can be utilized to not just take out genes, but put in new ones. CRISPR-Cas9 is not all that efficient. It can make random cuts in other parts in the genome, and that's why you want to use it at least somewhat conservatively. But there is next generation CRISPR technology that's far more efficient. But more importantly, these treatments have demonstrated themselves to be safe. Some therapies, like the ones that they used for thalamesia, sickle cell anemia, those kinds require you to take immunosuppressives and they replace your bone marrow, but other ones do not require such extreme measures. In fact, it can be done with injections. Some of the really cool applications of these that have hit human trials have involved changing the expression of genes that produce toxic proteins which build up in the body. Now the really cool thing about that is this technology could save children. Some of the worst childhood diseases are lysosomal storage diseases. Ones where the body cannot deal with certain metabolites and as a result they build up, they can cause things like San Filippo syndrome, also known as childhood dementia where children slowly lose their mental capacity, and it's also extremely painful. For the first time ever, we may have something that could be applied as a treatment, and genetic therapies are being tested. But for the first time, they're also being tested on things that are not as debilitating, like familial hypercholesterolemia, people who produce too much cholesterol, and their body can't break it down properly, and they end up with it building up and it can cause heart disease. That's going through clinical trials right now. And that means that we've demonstrated this stuff is remarkably safe. This is going to be a whole new field of medicine where gene editing becomes commonplace. It's a cure, not a patch. Now, some of these kinds of treatments rely on changing genetic expression, and that's epigenetics. Along with not taking something like chemotherapy, you're not going to be able to get rid of every cell that's expressing the genes that you don't want them to. So this might end up needing to be an ongoing treatment that somebody can receive over their lifetime. I think in my lifetime, I'm going to see conditions that everyday people suffer with cured. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Something like this could change my life. And what I do want you guys to know is that I am a scientist. I suffer with what is now an incurable genetic condition. I don't know how to impart on you how not having disruptions in research is so important. There are a lot of incurable childhood cancers, and children need to get into clinical trials to maybe save that life. What we are seeing right now with funding freezes and grant freezes is unprecedented. I want to tell you how important this is. Not just to me, but for families. I've been lucky enough to link people up with clinical trials for their children. This matters. Now there is some good news. The freeze on grants and loans that come from the federal government is temporarily frozen. I know postdocs who get paid on grants and they're not presently getting paid. They have to go to work and still can't pay their bills. The result of all of this is people leaving. Half of everyone I know in the sciences is looking at jobs overseas because there's no guarantee that our jobs will be safe here. The United States has been a technological superpower for a long time, and pretty much our only saving grace was having really good medical care if you had the money to afford it. And this may take that away. Beyond the medical implications for these things, the globe is an interlinked community. The United States provides training and funding to help suppress infectious diseases in other countries, help train people to identify what could be a problem. It's part of a global alert network. Freezing the ability to do that is insane. I work in agriculture. I help design agricultural inoculants as alternatives to fertilizer. That can be really helpful for preventing pollution and keeping people fed. The CDC, these guys, they keep diseases from wiping us out. This is not the time for this. We are on the precipice of a major pandemic and it is going to be 
bad. H5N1 bird flu. Any kind of disruption holds us back from being able to identify threats and ultimately being able to find solutions to those threats. What the 